I want you to think back to some of the very best times of your life. Uh, Maybe it was an amazing vacation you took, an incredible dinner you enjoyed, or an unforgettable concert you experienced. When you think about those memories, what's the one thing that those times have in common? Uh, While the place where you were, or the food that you ate, or the music you listened to played a significant role in those memories, My guess is that it was the people who made those times so very meaningful. I'd say we all have a strong desire for moments like that, moments of deep connection, heartfelt conversation. And when we don't experience those times, we feel a sort of hole in our soul, a a longing in our life, a gap that can only be filled with deep friendship. A, A study from the Cigna Group highlighted that since the United States has emerged from the COVID pandemic, there's been a steep increase in the number of people experiencing some form of loneliness. In fact, 57% of men and 59% of women reported being lonely in 2021. That means we can assume that over half of us that are watching this right now would say that we are affected by loneliness. More than half of us. And so I think we'd all agree that we long for something more. And we don't want the next generation to experience this loneliness that has so plagued our generation. I mean, we want our kids to have deep, meaningful, life-giving friendships, the kind God created us to experience. Today, we continue our U Plus Parenting series, where we've had conversations about one of the most important and challenging aspects of life. That's raising children and students who flourish in their faith, mental health, relationships, and character. Uh, You might be familiar with these words from the book of Proverbs. Uh, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Uh, This verse reminds us of the crucial role we play in the lives of children and students. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, or family friends, we have the opportunity and responsibility to guide the next generation towards a path of flourishing that, as this proverb says, will influence them even when they are old. And so over these five weeks, we have explored practical biblical advice for influencing kids and students to thrive in every aspect of their lives. And our hope is that in the process, we feel more equipped with the tools and wisdom we need to not only help our children and students, but to help ourselves as well. Today, we're gonna explore the importance of meaningful friendships for kids. And consider how we can help them be the kind of friends God wants them to be and build the kind of friendships God wants them to build. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. And you know, Scripture is full of examples of these types of friendships. I'm reminded of the complex friendship between Peter and Paul who overcame their differences to become close friends who shared a deep commitment to the mission of Jesus. Peter recognized the wisdom God had given to Paul and and Paul was grateful for the support and encouragement he received from Peter. Uh, We can look to the Old Testament at the relationship between Ruth and Naomi. It's a beautiful example of loyalty and selflessness. Ruth's commitment to Naomi, even in the face of hardship, is is a testament to the power of friendship. You see, these stories and and so many others in Scripture give us examples of deep and meaningful friendships. You know, one of the most significant friendships of my lifetime is the one with my brother Dave. You know, my older, shorter, not quite as good-looking brother Dave. You know, him, yeah. We've always been good friends. Uh, We shared a bedroom through junior high. First bunk beds, then the not-so-functional trundle bed that always seemed to collapse in the middle of the night. And you know who was on the trundle. Of course, me. We started our own lawn mowing company when we were in junior high. D and J Lawn Service. Why not J and D? A question that plagues me to this very day. Uh, We went to college together, even roomed together for a semester. And eventually we started Community Christian Church together. And no, it's not always been easy, but through it all, we are still close friends. I can't help but be reminded of these words from Proverbs. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. In other words, see, lots of acquaintances will only get you so far, but what we really need is someone who will stick closer than a brother. And for me, that friend actually is my brother. 
Uh, friendship is a beautiful gift. And one of the greatest gifts we can give a child is to help them be a good friend and know how to build good friendships, the kind of friendships that will not only help them get through life's challenges, but also bring them closer to God. So to help us, help the kids around us, I want you to think of yourself as a Sherpa. That's right, a Sherpa. S-H-E-R-P-A, Sherpa. Now, this picture might look some of you like some of you carrying your kid's backpack to school in January, but it's not. It's actually a picture of a Sherpa. Anyone know anything about Sherpas? And the name Sherpa originates with a group of people who lived outside of Nepal. They reside near and around the Himalayan mountains and help people navigate the terrain of Mount Everest and other tall peaks in the region. Sherpas act as a guide for mountaineers who want to conquer those massive peaks. And because Sherpas know the region, they go first and they model what it looks like for the rookie climbers. Yeah, they take those first steps to ensure that the new mountaineers don't stray away from the route that will get them to their destination. Let's just say, if you're going to try to climb Mount Everest, you want a Sherpa leading the way. And so I want us to think of ourselves as Sherpas for the children in our lives when it comes to their friendships. In their book, Parenting, authors Andy and Sandra Stanley urge us in this way. They say, be their parent so they remain free to be your child. Be their parent so they remain free to be your child. You see, one of the biggest mistakes we make as parents is to try to be our kid's friend. And it's so tempting to slip into friend mode, isn't it? Why? Well, because we want them to like us. But you're not their friend. You're their Sherpa. You're their guide. Uh, One of the beautiful things about being an adult in the life of a kid is that you get to be a Sherpa. You have that chance to guide them to be the kind of friend God wants them to be and build the kind of friendships God so wants them to build. So think of yourself as a Sherpa. I'll tell you what, if there's someone nearby, turn to them and say, you are a Sherpa. So what does a Sherpa do? Well, let's talk about that. First, Sherpas model what to do. They model what to do. Uh, Like the Stanleys explained, it's not your job to be your child's friend. It is your job to be their guide, to lead by example. You see, friends don't necessarily have authority, but parents, adults do. And adults sometimes say to kids, well, you know, do what I say, not what I do. But if we hope to model for the next generation what it looks like to form deep friendships, it has to be do what I do. I mean, just imagine if, say, you were about to climb Mount Everest and you had a Sherpa. And your Sherpa pulls out a map, highlights the path to the peak of the mountain, says, good luck, and then just walks away. I mean, you'd be like, oh, wait a second. (laughs) I mean, even if a Sherpa gave you a manual and a training video on how to climb a mountain, you would still want them to climb with you and model for you the best way to make it to the top. Am I right? Parents, aunts, uncles, Kid City and Stucco leaders, this epidemic of loneliness is becoming more and more destructive. And the children, more than ever, the children in our lives need us to model for them a better way. Growing up, I watched my parents model what it was like to develop deep friendships. Yeah, some of my most meaningful memories as a kid are of my mom and dad with their small group friends. Yeah, I watched them read scripture together, pray for each other, encourage one another, care for one another. I I remember one season where my mom and dad had small group after church on Sunday nights. And so we'd go to church Sunday morning, then again on Sunday night, and then they'd stay after church, sometimes late into the evening, circled up with their friends, just doing life together. And sure, my parents talked to me about what it looks like to be a good friend and to build meaningful friendships. But what I saw them do was so much more valuable than anything I ever heard them say. In Paul's letter to Christ's followers in Rome, he instructs us, rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And the kids in our lives, they need to see us high-fiving and fist-bumping and celebrating the good times with our friends, but they also need a front row seat to see us grieve and mourn with our friends who are heartbroken and hurting. Do the kids in your life see you making friendships a priority? Do they? 
Do the kids in your life understand why you care for your friends the way you do? Do they experience the laughter you share with your friends and see you walking alongside your friends through tough times? Remember, see, when it comes to helping a child develop healthy friendships, more is caught than taught. You are a Sherpa. You are their guide. You need to model for them what it looks like to navigate the tough and rewarding terrain of friendship. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this here. Community provides a great way for us to model healthy friendships to our kids. That's what small groups are all about. Uh, being the kind of friend and building the kind of friendships that draw us closer to God. And on occasion, I've heard parents say that they're just too busy for small group or even that their kids' activities are keeping them from being in a group. But as your pastor, can I just say that you being in a small group might be the best activity for your kid? So Sherpas lead by example as they model what it takes to reach a summit. But Sherpas also play a crucial role in training people to climb that treacherous terrain of a mountain. You might say that their job is to mold mountaineers into the best climbers they can possibly be. You know, kids never stop needing us to be a model for them and what it looks like to be the kind of friend God wants them to be and to build the kind of friendships God wants them to build. But there are times when some training, some molding is also needed. You know, when my kids were uh, 10 and 12, we set out on a major adventure as a family. Uh, we moved from the suburbs, Naperville, to the north side of Chicago to help start new churches in the city. Uh, this is what we looked like then. And I feel like that season required Lisa, my wife, and I to be more intentional than we were before about training our kids to navigate what was at times some tough terrain. And some of that molding included long conversations well into the night. I remember a tear-filled conversation between me and my son, Graham, and I was just doing the best I could to help him understand that we really felt like this move was something we believed God wanted us to do. And we knew it would have a profound impact on his friendships. And so, you know, we tried to be honest about how hard it's going to be and how it would mean leaving behind some of his good friends, but that we were just going to do our best to trust that God would take care of us and provide new friends. And sure enough, he did. Teaching the kids in our lives how to be the kind of friend God wants us to be and to build the kind of friendships God wants us to build is one of the greatest lessons we can teach them. And Scripture gives us great tools to teach kids how to be good friends. For example, just soak in the profound simplicity of these words from Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? Do to others as you would have them do to you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. So in other words, whatever I do to other people should be what I would want someone to do to me. Simple, yes, but simplistic? <laughs> Absolutely not. And, and just imagine the incredible impact if we could mold our kids into the kind of students and young adults who truly live out this one principle. You could ask the child in your life, uh, when you have something new or, or something that none of your other friends or siblings have, uh, what would it look like for you to do for others what you would want them to do for you? Uh, when a student in your life knows of someone who is lonely or being left out or bullied, you could ask that student, what does it mean to treat that person the way you would want them to treat you? You know, Paul mentored Timothy and wrote these words as he was training him. He wrote, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Paul said, all scripture, all of it is useful. The stories, the principles are there for us to train and mold the kids in our lives to be the kind of friends God wants them to be and to build the kind of friendships God wants them to build. And that leads us to the last principle we can learn from a Sherpa. Uh, not only do Sherpas model how to climb and mold their followers into climbers, they also serve as mentors. Now, here's a picture of my kids now. My daughter's 23, Chloe, and my son, Graham, is 26. And over the past, you know, several years, we've begun to kind of make that shift to where we feel like we are more of mentors or life coaches to our kids. And so, you know, I love it when they're dealing with a friendship or relational challenge and they actually ask for my help. 
But I will tell you, it's still hard because sometimes it's all I can do not to respond to them by saying, you think you might do what? <laughs> now, one of the most notable examples of mentoring is Paul and Timothy. And Paul took Timothy under his wing as a kind of adopted son and mentored him to become a faithful disciple of Jesus and a significant leader in the early church. Even if you're not a parent, you have the opportunity to invest in the lives of kids and students. You could be a powerful presence in the life of a child by attending their sporting events, performances, birthdays. Often just showing up means the world to a kid. I had an aunt and uncle when I was a kid who would sometimes drive over five hours to be at my games and performances. And they saw some really poor performances, let me tell you. Over and over again, research confirms the value of mentors. For example, youth who meet regularly with their mentors are 46% less likely than their peers to start using illegal drugs. 40%, 46% less likely. Young adults who face an opportunity gap but have a mentor are 55% more likely to be enrolled in college than those who did not have a mentor. And sometimes mentoring can be as simple as taking the time to ask kids questions about their life and just giving them a safe place to share their experiences. Now, when we moved to the city, I was so grateful for a couple of young adults who mentored our kids. Now, if you belong to one of our community locations, helping out in Kid City or Stucco is a great way to mentor the next generation. You can be a Sherpa in the lives of kids and students in our church family. Here's a glimpse of the difference you could make in the lives of kids and students, as told by some of community's very own. All right, tell me about your small group leader. My small group leader helps us, and I help my small group leader. He's really funny, and he lets us do a lot of things. I love my small group leader because he teaches me about God. They make Kid City fun. My small group leader is great because he has a great sense of humor and he prays for us and he's kind. They're very nice and kind. She's really nice. I like my teacher because she's really nice to me. And I help her by taking the crayon out. Sometimes at Easter we get fun snacks. My leader is awesome because she leads us in, in really fun relay games. I love to play games! Where do we start? He's so kind and we can always rely on him. You can tell him anything. What about you trust him with that? What about you trust that guarantee? Don't take backs. My favorite thing about my Fuka leader is we get to do like a bunch of fun stuff and talk about Coco Melon. My favorite thing about my Fuka teacher is he wears a lot of hockey jerseys. My favorite part of my Fuka leader is he's quite the scholar. <laughs> <laughs> Very intelligent. Hi, bro. I love my small group leaders because they encourage me. She likes to say hi to me a lot. She is fun, loving, and she's funny. She's sweet and she plays with me and she plays the flower and kitty. I like to do with Kayla because you come over to my house and we play together. I like with Kayla about cheering. This is with Kayla is the best. Kurt is a W. He's just really nice. He's very interactive and talks to us, too. He's just a W in general. My favorite thing about my Stuka leader is her amazing, bubbly personality. My favorite thing about my Stuka leader is she's funny. She loves us like we're her own kids. She's so nice. She's really kind. She does lots of fun stuff. I've never been taught about Jesus uh, this good before. My small group leader is great because he always makes everything so much fun because he always um, makes us laugh. My shoes are pretty cool. Are yours? I like my small group leader because she is fun and I like to play with her. He's always like open to questions and he like, always answers questions probably. You always make people feel welcome and you're ready to bring the energy anytime, any night. He always like listens to us and gives us really good advice about life situations. He encourages us to do things when I need someone to talk to. I learn about God. She's always there for us. She is very relatable and that we know we can talk to her. My small group teacher is amazing because she lets us do fun and amazing activities. Thank you for listening to this message.
you too could be a Sherpa. You could model, mold, and mentor the next generation to be the kind of friends God wants them to be and build the kind of friendships God wants them to build. Now, I know that parenting and investing in the next generation can often feel nothing short of overwhelming. But let me reassure you that you are not alone. In fact, Jesus wants to walk with you every step of the way. John, one of Jesus' closest friends, records these words of Jesus. He said, I no longer call you servants, but friends. What an incredible reminder that the one who models friendship better than anyone else is also our friend. And he wants to mold and mentor you to not only be a great friend and to build great friendships yourself, he wants to guide you to help the next generation build meaningful friendships. And you know what? Truth is, none of us will ever be the kind of Sherpas we want to be to the kids we love until we let Jesus be the Sherpa who leads us. So will you let him be your Sherpa as you model, mold, and mentor the next generation? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you that Jesus is our friend. And he wants to come alongside us as we seek to model, mold, and mentor the next generation to be the kind of friends you want them to be and to build the kind of friendships you want them to build. We pray this in your name. Amen.